I think we're live. Here we being already June 29th. I'm I'm thinking most, if not all, students should be done school by now. Maybe maybe you have one more day. Uh, but I think even some kids were done maybe days or weeks ago. Uh, my kid was done yesterday. So I just thought there'd be a fun, colorful way to uh, kick off the summer with some just some simple designs of, you know, they're square fish, really. You can make them round. And um, this will be good for any age. Any age could do this. You don't have to use a canvas. Mine's on a canvas. Did you know you could do watercolor and canvas? You don't have to use watercolors. You could use um, maybe some colored pencils, pencil crayons. You could use pastels, you could use acrylics, you could use anything. We're gonna all start off the same way in drawing our fish first, and then you could fill it in any way you want. Welcome to Jared. Yeah, let me know in the chat, in the live chat, uh, maybe where you're from, maybe what grade you're going into in September. And, um, Anything else you want to tell me? Maybe it's your birthday. I'd love to hear that. Welcome, Jared. They do look like diamonds. Yes, I did say square, but really it's a square on its side. It's a diamond. You're right. So uh, we will get started with um, like the supplies that you can kind of see in, uh, in the shot here. And then we'll get started. Now, keep in mind that this, it is live, yes, but you are able to pause rewind even and uh, give yourself a little bit more time to work on a particular step um, you could go at any pace you like welcome to navi three and a half years old awesome it's going to turn out so colorful so cute welcome to bernadette and to me all right so i'm going to set this guy i'm going to put him Kind of off to the side a little bit here. He's going to be there for a moment. Now, I will be demonstrating on a canvas because I think it's just sometimes fun to do watercolor on a canvas. Um, so that's what I'll use to demonstrate. But you could do paper. Here's an example of watercolor paper that I like to use uh, very often. Canson XL watercolor paper. Um, it, I always say it's a medium quality for a medium price. You can, of course, have a, any brand that you want to use, any size. This is quite a big size. This is, um, what is it, 11 by 15. So that's an option if you want to do your painting on paper. I'm going to do this size canvas. What do we got today? Maybe a 16 by a 12. Yeah, looks like a 12 by 16 canvas. Could be a square canvas, could be a round canvas. Anything that you have handy would work. I have a ruler. We're going to be doing a bit of um, straight lines, make a sort of a grid on an angle. So a ruler is handy. I've got we've got a couple of pencils here. Whether you want to use like a art pencil or just a regular school pencil, is all right. Any kind of pencil and a little eraser. Um, over here, I have a nice just a regular size sharpie or something else that is waterproof. I'm gonna be doing the Sharpie lines before I do the paint. So if you are gonna use a wet medium like watercolors, maybe even acrylics, the marker that you use to outline the fish has to be waterproof. If you're planning to do the color in you know, crayons or pastels or markers, you don't necessarily have to have a waterproof black outline. You could do that outline in uh, a regular pen, um, black crayon, back, black color pencil, that kind of thing. That's what I'm going to use. These are optional. If you want to add a little bit of white uh, details, such as like a little, little dot in their eye for like a highlight. I do have little, little flicks of white as like a shiny highlight on the fish. You can do that with white acrylic a white paint pen, maybe a white out pen. I'm not gonna use 
say the white of watercolor because that's very see-through. So, I mean, it's already a mixed media piece. Why not have one more type of medium acrylic? That's optional. Here are the watercolors I'm going to use today. I have many, many sets, way too many to mention, but these are the ones I like to use a lot. This one has seen a lot of paintings. Um, I got this on Amazon, Mei Liang, nice little travel travel set there. And these are called Paint Stones from Beam Paints. And you, you, you make your own palette, so to speak. You buy them individually and just kind of make your own. So those are the ones I'm gonna use today. Remember, any type of art medium you want to use. Markers are fine. Crayons is fine. Anything you want to use, do it. And I've got my water and my paper towel for my watercolors. And just I just grabbed a handful of brushes. What do we got? Kind of like kind of a really big one to fill in my background. And a little handful of smaller ones to fill in my fish. We don't need anything too fine today. And that's all I have for supplies. Let's pop this one up here a little bit. Let's get this out of the way. We're gonna do our, our grid first. Get out your trusty ruler. We're going to make a grid, but the grid is going to be on the diagonal. It's not gonna be an up and down horizontal vertical grid, a diagonal grid. It, it's gonna be interesting. I'm going to measure, um, I'll probably do every, let's say every two centimeters. Um, if you're using a ruler that has inches, I would say every like three quarter inch ish or every inch. The bigger you make your grid, the more space you have between all your lines, the bigger your fish are going to be. So if you want bigger fish, less fish, do a bigger grid, so bigger space between all of these little measurements I'm going to do. So I'm I'm going to do every two centimeters a little mark, just a little tick mark. So I'm going to do every two centimeters. So I'm starting at like the top corner here. Keep going. But again, if you want to do every, let's say, three centimeters, every inch, maybe inch and a quarter. A little mark, a little line. It's hard to see because I'm making such teeny tiny little lines. But just a little tick mark for myself to see. And it's okay if like the very last one doesn't quite work out. You don't have like the perfect amount of space in there. And then I'm going to do the same. So every two centimeters along this side. But I'm going to start from the same corner and work down. Um, yeah, I'll turn it this way. However you want to orient your ruler and your canvas or your paper. Every two centimeters-ish. So now I have this whole top, all little tick marks, this one as well. And this will be the start of our diagonal grid. So that first mark at two centimeters and this other mark down the side at two centimeters, I'm going to connect those marks together. And I would do light pencil lines to make your grid so that they're easily erasable. You don't see a lot of pencil lines in the final uh, painting. Okay, so it's hard to see because I've got so many lights kind of washing this out. So that mark and that mark, I connected them together. That second mark at four centimeters and this second mark at four centimeters, I also connected together. And it's going to go all, all the way along. A two centimeter grid. It's okay if the lines aren't perfectly perfect. 
because mine certainly aren't. And this might seem like a very small grid considering how big my fish are. But uh, you'll, you'll see what happens when we start creating the fish. come a time where maybe your ruler is um, you know not long enough to do the whole span but just do your best kind of line it up and I just move my ruler over try to line it up again This part is the most, um, um, I wouldn't say tedious. It is time consuming, making this grid. All right, move out of the way, you fish. Where am I gonna go, to the corner? Now I've come to the part where, you know, I've gotten all the way to the corner where I've measured, but I need to do more measurements all the way along here because I need to connect them. So really in the end, kind of your whole border will have the little, little tick marks every two centimeters approximately. We have to continue that grid. more I could yeah I could continue that but I might as well do all edges all my edges that two centimeter around with my little tick marks. I'm going to continue my diagonal grid. Does anyone have any interesting long weekend plans? So in Canada, we have uh, Canada Day this weekend. So it's a long weekend here in Canada. Maybe a barbecue. That's a very popular Canada Day idea. Go to the beach maybe. Personally, I don't, uh, I don't have a plan yet for Canada. I think some friends are doing a bonfire, so we might uh, stop by that bonfire. Would be nice. Have some s'mores.
maybe you guys have a smaller canvas or a smaller paper you're working on and your grid is already done in at least in this direction mine's almost there but then we'll have to do the grid in the opposite direction right we have to do all the way across but we use the same little the lines the lines we just made we're going to use them again so we don't have to do any more measuring All right, so we did all of our diagonal lines this way, but we want them, it's a grid. We want them going the other way as well. It's the same concept. Uh, pick a corner to start at. Uh, maybe I'll start up here. And I'm gonna connect that first one at two centimeters with this one at two centimeters. Four centimeter mark, six centimeter mark. And then you really start seeing that grid. There's, oh, where is it? There it is. It's diagonal, but if you, you know, if you turn it, they end up being squares. Each of these is a little square. And since all those little tick marks are already there, it's a little bit quicker doing the second part. As you make your grid, start to think about maybe what colors of fish. Maybe you have a favorite color and you want, maybe you could do all your fish the same colors because they're, you know, from the same species in the same school. That makes sense. Or if you're like me and you want a variety of colors and patterns, you can do that too maybe have a theme like just using blue and green and yellow or something. Or I did mention Canada Day. You could do red and white fish. That would be interesting. If you're in the States, maybe you want to do red, white, and blue fish for July 4th. That's also coming up. Maybe you're going to have different fish represent different people in your family and you want to do their favorite colors. There's an idea. What about, um, I guess the fish could have accessories. If you want like a fish to be a certain family member, you could accessorize them like your your brother loves playing soccer so he's wearing a, a soccer shirt or your mom loves cooking so the fish is holding a frying pan wouldn't that be hilarious okay my grid is not perfect i'll admit that yours does not have to be perfect either Okay. 
it seems like a lot of lines. It'll all make sense in a moment. Okay, that took a while. Maybe you're not quite there with your diagonal grid. You could hit pause, catch up, take a breath, take a breather. That was a lot of lines. So yeah, we're gonna go from this very intense grid to this fun image. All right, yeah, so you can do different size fish too. You could do them in different places. They don't have to all line up. These ones are all kind of lined up. These are, you know, facing this way. These are facing this way, kind of a pattern. But really, you could do them anywhere, any size. Just think about that as we're doing this. So we have our beautiful pencil grid here. We can, the sky is the limit, really. Um, if you want, you can go right to Sharpie marker or sketch some of your fish in pencil first and then do it with the Sharpie. Up to you. Um, I will probably go with the Sharpie right away if, if I'm struggling. I'm not above going with the pencil and sketching some out first. Okay, where am I going to put this? Can I put that guy here? Who, who wants to be on top? Um, I mean, I guess this one should be on top. So I'm going to choose somewhere in the middle to start my first fish. And then I'm going to work my pattern kind of outward. So let's see. How big do I want my fish to be? I'm going to make sure it's um, a squared fish. So either the first fish is four of these units together, or it's nine of these units together, or it's 16 of these units together. The, you know, the side here has to be the same as the side here and here and here. So I'm just gonna arbitrarily pick, I'm gonna go with nine units personally. Here's my Sharpie. You could do this first in pencil and then the Sharpie, up to you. So once I, once I complete this square, I'm going to call it a square, even though it's more like a diamond. You'll, you'll see what I mean. So that'll be one of my fish's bodies. And it's three units by three units right there. And I'm going to give them a like a curvy fin and a curvy fin down here. So kind of coming from this tip, how big do I want it maybe to here? Any style fin, it could be frilly, it could be a triangle. Mine's kind of a lovely curve with like a shark fin shape. So again, you could be drawing this with your pencil or go right to the Sharpie or the marker you're using, colored pencil. I'm going to make another fin down here. Um, it doesn't have to be the same. If you want the dorsal fin to be bigger, go for it. And you want these ones to be maybe smaller. There's so many different fish in the world. And each, each one of these could be different in your art. I kind of want to see all kinds of different styles of fish. I, I welcome you to change it up, make it your own, make it unique. Okay, so this is just the start. And look at, 
Some of my lines are thick, some are thin. They're not perfectly straight, even though I used a ruler for the grid. And that's all right. I'm going to give them a little tail. Now, my tails are all the same. You could do different tails for sure. Big, like wavy, streamy ones, like a beautiful betta fish or triangle or um, sort of like a mermaid tail and that it has two two parts to it. I don't know what you would call that. Flanges, dolphin tail, whale tail, anything you like. I'm going to do sort of a, what would you call that? A quarter of a circle. Yeah, that's what I would call that. A quarter of a circle tail. So maybe, like maybe this one's bigger than say these ones, that's fine. This painting I'm doing today is going to turn out different than my original one. It's even going to be different um, if I do it again in the future. I want differences. I want to see unique stuff. Let's give them a little face. So I made my face kind of like a, like a curve shape, but you can do whatever you like. <laughs> I gave him like a straight mouth but you could give him a smile it could be maybe sticking his tongue out I'll just give him a straight mouth and give him an eye so i've got like a little eye you could do big eyes let's do that's kind of a little bigger than that one i did it sort of bigger that's kind of cute And then I'll probably leave like the curvy pattern, the little accent patterns till the end. So I'll just make this fish kind of over and over again using my grid. Or you do you, make a small one, make a, make a big one, make two fishes kissing, um, uh, upside down fish, like anything you want, anywhere you want. I'm gonna kind of follow the pattern, but that's just me. All right, I'm going to do one. They could be tightly packed, like one is almost touching the next one or, or have a little gap. Let's go right here. So this will be the tail. The grid is there to help you space everything out, line everything up. There we go. So maybe this guy's little snout is a little pointier than this guy. Doesn't matter. Maybe his eyes a little smaller. Can make it a little bigger. There we go. I'm going to keep going with my pattern going this way. Even if the pattern takes the fish kind of like off the edge. And as you do more and more of these, if you're doing them in pencil first and then the marker, as you do more and more, you might gain confidence and then just, just go straight for the marker. Yep, this guy's kind of right off the page. That's all right. Ooh, what about also adding other things in your pattern? What about a, a turtle? Ooh, you could do a row of fish, maybe do a row of turtles. You could definitely augment this pattern to have a turtle involved. Interesting. A little bit of face here. There we go. There's a good spot. I want you guys to be able to see this bit, but also my bit too. 
All right, I need another face right here. Later when we're done drawing our fish, filling them in is just fun and fast and easy. It's like a coloring book. We've already made our own coloring page. We're just gonna fill in the black lines with any colors we want. So I've done one, one row. One row. I'm going to do another row. Maybe they're facing the same way, other way. Up to you. It would make sense if the school of fish was all facing the same way. But I don't do things to make sense. Let's have them sort of like offset. They don't have to be like stacked on top of each other. These are kind of like this staggered. Let's go. If I have his fin coming here, that'd be good. So this fish is not like directly over either of these. It's kind of partway through, midway, halfway. And we'll do it again. What else would be interesting? Um, I guess the bottom, the bottom of your painting could be sand, could be seaweed. It doesn't have to be fish. All the way to the bottom, you could have seashells, treasure chest, coral, things to think about as you're drawing. Thick, thin, thin, thin. Each fish will have its own unique personality and look. Just this little face peeking in there. Okay, let's get here. Thank you. 
it kind of has like a meditative kind of quality to it, just making all these lines over and over again. Here. Now, are they all perfect? No. Are they going to look precious when we have color on them and patterns? Yes. I do have more room for more fish. Let's do that. Let's put the next one. I want, sort of want the same size gap, if you know what I mean. Here. So if that's the gap there, maybe like there. I think so. more. I did it. Yep, there we go. As I said, you could add something else, maybe a little bit of sand or seaweed down below. If you did want to have like the little tips, I've got the little tips of a fish above it showing just to complete the pattern if you wanted that. If you if you had room down below, like mine, to have like a little half of a fish down here, you could definitely do that. Or put the ocean floor. I kind of like the idea of the ocean floor. I'm gonna do it just for funsies, just to make it a little different than my other one. Put some sand, I'll say it's sand. Just for something different, I'll put a bit of seaweed. I challenge you at home to do something to make yours a little bit different from mine so that we don't all have exactly the same painting. 
make just something a little different. What else could be down here? Like a, um, maybe a rock with a starfish on it could be funny. here a little a little anemone or like oh I know one of those things with like tendrils coming out of it Be funny just something different don't want to make it the exact same another little rock something cute yeah so if you want to keep working on your outlines if you want to pause it on this screen and work on your fish if you want to pause it on this screen and work on your fish, do that. Catch up to me. I'm going to add some patterns. I'm also going to add some bubbles to my fish and my ocean. What do I have here? Yeah, you can pause it on this screen and look at the patterns I've done and do those or make up your own. Make up some crazy ones. Make up... Uh, maybe the letter of the name of the person that fish represents, you know, the letter C, the letter M kind of thing. I'm going to do, I'm going to do whatever I feel like. Maybe, maybe all of these guys are all polka dot and then all these guys are stripe. Who knows? You do you. It could be on the body. It could be on the face. It could be on the fins. I've got all different kind of, patterns and things going on on my original but I'm not going to do the same thing on this one got to make it different so here I did all spotty versus over here I did kind of spots just on the body and stripey on the fins but I can do what I want are my polka dots perfect circles they are not and I'm okay with that Ooh, what about uh like a heart pattern or anything maybe your favorite sports team maybe your favorite superhero your favorite food You could make these fish look like, you know, real life sort of markings, colorings. Like if you did say like orange and white stripies, it could be like a clown fish, like um, Nemo. Spotty, spotty, spotty. I've got all spotties there. But when I paint them, I might do them different colors. What else? Maybe I can do, um, I do like the kind of wavy, the wavy stripey look. Could be three stripes, could be two stripes. I love it. Stripey on the tail. Mm. 
I do think, you know, the more detail, the better. The more little shapes you create for yourself to fill in with different colors, the more interesting your design will be. But at the same time, you're going to have to fill this all in. So if you want a little easier on yourself, do a little bit less detail, a little bit less pattern. Okay, so I've got swirly stripes. I've got polka dots. What can I do down here? It could be um, horizontal stripes. Could be any pattern you can think of. Lightning bolts, hearts, anything you want. I think I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Sort of like a sideways rainbow, curvy stripes. Yeah, you can take much more time creating patterns, whether it's these, maybe some of these. You can also give them accessories. I'm going to add some bubbles. I've got sort of like a little bubble, big bubble, little bubble, big bubble or just random bubbles anywhere. You could literally do whatever you feel like. Again, don't worry if your bubbles aren't perfect circles. Because you got a picture when bubbles are kind of floating up to the surface, they're kind of they're kind of changing shape as they go a little bit. Could be like three bubbles all the way up. You have a question here. Oh yeah, totally. So Soul Chamber Therapy wanted to know if they could sell the work that uh, they make from this tutorial. I, myself, Chris, I'm very okay with that. Absolutely. Even take the idea of this is this design, maybe make like a, a bigger version, a smaller version, make a greeting card version would be so cute. I'm definitely okay with that. Uh, some artists are also okay with that, but they like to be maybe acknowledged. Uh, when you do say post it for sale, you can say you know, uh, created using a tutorial from Artist Palette Germ Region. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, by no means did I come up with this idea on my own. No, I looked at different fish um, coloring pages, different fish patterns, and then I came up with this sort of grid idea. I like that question. Good question. All right. I think I've got all my bubbles, all my patterns. Yeah. So I think I'm done with the marker portion of this personally, but if you wanted to add even more detail with your marker, with whatever you're using for your outlines, keep going at it. But I think I'm done. Yeah. Everyone's got an eyeball. Everyone's got two fins and a tail. I think I'm good. I will erase that whole grid, that grid that we spent probably at least 20 minutes making that grid, right? I'm going to erase it. 
it's okay if some of the grid remains a little bit. That's fine. We're going to color it with so many bright colors. No one's going to see those, those gray lines. love that people are following our tutorials, creating their own work based on the skills that they learn and selling them. I love when people buy your art, invest in you, and it makes you feel good. You want to make more art. You want to try new ideas. Um, this past weekend, so well, almost a whole week ago, I I had given over 175 of my pieces. So whether it's the acrylic tutorials I teach, the watercolor tutorials, 175 pieces of that. My mom brought it to the local church. They set up a silent auction and raised, I wanna say $1,500 at the silent auction, but they didn't sell every piece. So they could still do another art sale silent auction another weekend and raise more money uh, for a, a youth group. And it was just stuff I had laying around the house. Because you can imagine that, you know, doing multiple paintings, drawings a week, it builds up. Grace, get that going. Yeah, I'm kind of being lazy, not fooling or fully erasing everything. I know that it's going to get covered up with colors, so. Also, sometimes if I have like like a full box or two of you know art that needs to get out of my house, I will donate that to the local like retirement home or uh, long-term care home and they distribute them amongst the residents. And it's cute, like when I drive by and I see in the window, the back of a canvas, and I'm thinking that might be one of my canvases in that window. Cheers me up a little bit, bringing a little color to, uh, to those homes. They're not always the most bright and cheerful. Okay, I think I've got, you know, most of it erased. Let's get that fluffy dust off. So, I mean, in the bright lights, it looks pretty erased, but if you look closely, there is still some grid lines. I'm okay with that. There we go. Did you think it would take us like almost a full hour just to make the pattern, the coloring page? And we're just gonna fill it in with any, any medium, any colors, anywhere. If you want a purple ocean, pink and purple ocean, and blue plants, you could do that. Do whatever you like with the colors you have available to you. Even maybe mixed media, do watercolor background, but then do pastel fish, you know, anything, inks. Um, do you have some glitter paint nearby? You can add some glitter or some stickers or maybe some rhinestones or sequins. Wouldn't that look amazing on these fish? All right, so I'll have, you know, I kind of want to see both of them, but I can't, I can't have it both ways. Okay, I've got my brushes. If you're not quite at the painting stage yet, that's okay. Just hit pause on the playback here, and you could get caught up. Take your time. And also, this video will be posted immediately on our channel. You could watch this later tonight. You could watch this tomorrow. You could watch this next year not going to go away if maybe an hour was about the attention span you could uh, you could keep it up for your kids maybe maybe it's bedtime could be all right I'm thinking of starting with probably lighter 
colors personally. I'm going to start with, say, yellows, maybe pinks, maybe oranges, lighter colors. If I started right away with dark blue, dark purple, my, my paint water would get very muddy. Um, and then choose a brush that's appropriate to the section that you want to work on. So, you know, for the background, I'm going to use this big Mondo brush. But for all these little dots and things, just any any brush you have handy, a dollar store brush would be absolutely fine. Get that brush wet. You can go with, yeah, beautiful cad yellow, beautiful lemon yellow. Where can we? I mean, I can't fit everything on the screen. Why don't I have a bigger screen? Let's get some yellow going. You can do any fish at any time. You don't have to do the fish that I'm doing. Everyone's going to fill in their fish at their own pace. And if you've never tried watercolor on a canvas before and you're trying it today, it's quite fun, actually. It um, the canvas sometimes kind of resists the paint. So I, I personally think it seems more vivid when it dries, but that's just me. And you will still get the, the watercolor kind of shapes that form, the darker patches, the lighter patches, the kind of um, cauliflowers or blooms. It doesn't dry perfectly even, but that's, that's part of watercolor. Yeah, the hard edges throughout, that's, that's fine. That's okay. And you know me, it's okay to go outside the lines. So look, right there, right there, I've already gone outside the line. It's going to happen a lot. And this is why it was important we used a waterproof something. If you're going to do watercolors, you don't want to smudge your beautiful lines you just made. Some yellow, I'll probably do kind of a little bit of yellow in each sort of row. But nothing stopping me from going back and adding more yellow later. So I've got some yellow going. Let's get a little, oh, I don't know, orange. Orange is lovely. Think about your favorite colors or your family's favorite colors. I also like doing watercolor on canvas, you get that little canvasy texture kind of peeking through. It's not a bad thing. I, I like it. Soul Chamber Therapy is saying that this is the first watercolor they've watched. We do offer a lot of acrylics, but there's so many watercolors on our channel. A lot of them by me. And I hope you watch maybe one or two more and get a and get a new passion. I 
I like watercolors for their portability. You could, you know, fold, fold this up, bring a little, bring a little paper cup with you for some water, bring one brush, bring a little, little watercolor sketchbook, sketch pad. And uh, yeah, out in nature or on a trip or on a train. I've definitely painted while on a train or, you know, just out and about waiting around for my kid or my husband. You know, you're watching your kid at soccer practice and you're doodling a little in your watercolor sketchbook out in nature. En plein air, as they say. Let's get some orange over here. Of course, I do offer more uh, complex watercolor tutorials. I definitely geared this particular one this evening to any age and I'm so glad that there are so many different age kids I saw uh, Katie's child is two uh, at Mia's is 10 10 years old awesome and and there's a lot of adults joining us today too not just kids Orange, what about a lovely hmm, pink? Sometimes I'll do some like extra mixing in my lid because I've got quite a dark pink, but maybe I want something lighter. So maybe I'll mix, mix a little extra water, mix a little, a little white into it. I want pink maybe right here. There we go again, going outside the lines. Standard Chris. Yep, again, outside the line. Yeah, I find it quite soothing, like like those adult coloring books, you know what I mean? Where else? Get some orange going. And the colors do tend to dry like a little lighter than they appear when you first put it down. 
So if it does dry and it seems lighter than you want, do a second coat. A second coat will make it uh, nice and vivid. But um, watercolor on the whole is a little bit kind of a little bit paler. What about? Oh, let's get some more orange over here. Yeah. What would I like? Green, red, green. I don't know. Let's go with. I do like this green here. green. Um, yeah, as we're filling this in, let me tell you about our, our Facebook group. It's called Watercolor Lovers by Artist Palette Durham Region. Every week on what I call Watercolor Wednesday, I post a new free video. It's about 20-ish minutes. It's like a mini tutorial to help you practice your, so your, your fundamental watercolor skills, just a fun little seasonal little images. Lovely green. Yeah, so we've got um, definitely over a hundred different Watercolor Wednesday videos already posted in that group. Um, let me get the link, get the link of the Watercolor Lovers Facebook group. I'll put it in the chat here. We're always uh, open to new members. It's a, a small little supportive watercolor community. And you can post tonight's uh, fish image or any other watercolors you've done in the past. I'm gonna, yeah, it's in the chat there. I'm also gonna pin it to the top. A lovely little Facebook group. Please try some of the free tutorials in there and post your results. And post the results of tonight's Schools Out for Summer Painting. I'd love to see them, especially the ones painted by all the young kids and the big kids. What else? Ooh, maybe some green seaweed. Yeah, and you might find that some of your watercolors are less see-through than some of your other watercolors. And maybe some of your black lines get a little bit covered up but when it's dry, you can just go over some of those areas with your Sharpie again to like re-darken those black lines. A little more green here. See what would I like next? I don't have any blues, purples, reds. Get some metallic paint involved. Let me do, I'm gonna go blue personally. Let's get some. So, so far I've been sort of picking and choosing different fish to work on. 
so that the areas that are wet have a chance to dry. And once they're dry, you can easily paint next to it without it bleeding into each other. Um, yeah, so like this guy's fully dry. I could paint the second color here without the orange and say blue touching and it won't bleed. That is the key with watercolor, just kind of, you know, bounce around. Um, where else am I going to go? Yeah, I did like the idea of orange with blue. It's a nice contrast. And your fish could have more than two colors on them. I did sort of two for each fish here, but literally the sky's the limit. You can have three, four different colors on the same fish. I like the suggestion from I'm not normal, pink with green. Yes, I love that idea. I think that would complement each other very nicely. What about, oh, you could do like a black and white fish. They don't have to be all colored. Black and white fish. What about gray, silver? Actually, anything with white would be nice because we're going to do the blue ocean. If you leave some of the fish parts white, that's going to be a beautiful contrast with the ocean. There's a nice orange and blue fish. Um, yeah, let's do pink and green as suggested. I'm going to do this pink right here is nice and dry, so I will have no problem doing green. Here's a lovely, this is a viridian green, sort of like emerald green, I would say. That's kind of a cool combination of colors. It kind of reminds me of like like retro 90s indoor decor of like maybe a fast food place. That's awful specific. That's where I'm picturing. Other contrast would be nice. Maybe anything with black, yellow with black, blue with black, red with black. It would look like a ladybug. And I like that a lot. I'm going to do a pink, pink face here. And it'll start to slowly fill in. Just keep at it. If you do, you don't need to take a break. Sort of stretch your legs, clear your mind, feed the dog, come back. We'll still be here. And it's rewindable. I suppose if you're watching this tomorrow or the next day. It's also fast forwardable. The kind of boring parts where I just kind of drone on about nothing. Let's do, 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 do. This 
it's a slightly lighter shade of blue to, to this one. This is more, um, I would say, phthalo blue. And the one I'm using now is more maybe like a, almost a periwinkle. definitely have like lighter parts, darker parts, all within the same shape. That's fine. I actually kind of like it when it dries unevenly. What would be a good contrast with this green guy? Maybe a red, like a rich red. I don't have any red yet. Cute, he's like a little Christmas fish. And there's no limit on how many mediums you could add to this, how much detail you wanna add. You could, when this is dry, get some paint pens or markers and doodle, doodle extra designs on these. Polka dots on the stripes, zigzags. Let's see, what do you want over here, sir? I am completely lacking purple. Wonderful, you're looking up watercolor starter kits. Love that idea. You, you really don't need big expensive sets of watercolors to follow along with any of our free watercolor tutorials or any of our paid watercolor tutorials. Um, this is a nice little set uh, on Amazon, like 25 bucks tops. You don't need to splurge for all the crazy, you know, 180 colors sets. People have been able to follow along even with just like a basic, you know, 10 or 12 colors from Crayola, let's say. I do really enjoy um, beam paints. I use these quite a lot. They are an indigenous women's company here in Ontario. I like to support them when I can. Uh, but I also do love painting with the fancier stuff. Um, what I found very interesting, if you email different watercolor companies for a free sample, oftentimes they will oblige and send you 
a free sample. You don't even have to pay for shipping. So I think I got four different watercolor companies just to send me like a, a little mini sample of their stuff by just a simple email. Ooh, I like this contrast here. We've got kind of a bright lime green with an orange. Very, I think, Nickelodeon colors here. Hmm, what else could be funny to add to this painting? Like maybe like a, a fish hook, like a little fishing line dangling down with a little hook and a little worm. Or what if this is like a school of fish? You could have a teacher fish, a bigger fish among the student fish. Different ideas for future. Um, you could create like a card design, a smaller version of this with like maybe two or three fish and maybe they're holding balloons in their mouth or um, a present in their fin. That'd be adorable. Getting there, getting there. Almost, almost finished filling in the fish just take your time um let's do a little bit over here i love blue but i have to keep in mind that this the sea, the water will be blue. So I don't want to do too much blue. This fish over here is like half a fish, but he reminds me of uh, flounder in the like original Little Mermaid. Beautiful yellow and blue. What else do I need more of? More yellow maybe? Yeah, maybe more yellow. I like to have a balance kind of throughout the piece of, of all the colors, but you're gonna have your own faves that you want maybe a little bit more of.
pretty good. I've got all my fish. I'll add a bit more color on my little ocean floor down here, the sea floor. Hmm, rocks. Rocks don't have to be gray. They could be any color. Pink rocks, red rocks, yellow rocks, anything you want. Get an orange rock. I'll do another orange rock. I'll do a green rock. Pink rock. Yeah, if some if some of your paints, wet paints touched other wet paints and some bleeds happened along the way, embrace them. Those are fine. No one's going to, you know, point at them and say, hey, look what happened here. Like a little pink got into a little bit of the green. Big deal. Oh, here's a little orange into some of the pink. Just makes the fish more unique. I'm gonna do like a, this is an ochre, yellow ochre, the, the sandy part at the bottom. Or you could do green or blue. Then we'll do our background. That's cute. Cheerful, happy. Look at that school. Completely different colors and patterns in this guy. dry a couple minutes while we're letting that dry a few minutes or maybe you're catching up to where I am now let me show you some upcoming events with me just a few to show you because I'm going to be taking some time off uh, to give birth as it were we're at 37 weeks three to go I'm gonna make it okay so next Thursday so in one week's time I'm going to be doing this adorable, I called it Summer Gnome Homes. It's watercolor and pen, but the pen is applied in kind of a messy, scribbly way. If you look closely, we're going to be drawing this together from scratch. There's no outline needed. And then we fill it in with watercolor. Very similar to what we're doing tonight. We're kind of making our own coloring page and filling it in with watercolor. So this one's a paid event on Zoom next Thursday. Tickets are on the website and all the ticket holders get the recording of me doing this painting to keep forever. So even if you don't make it to the Zoom next Thursday, you have that uh, available to you forever. Summer Gnome Homes, tickets on the website. Uh, in two weeks' time, uh, July 13th, midway through July, wow, um, right here on YouTube Live, this is going to be so cute. I've never done anything like this on YouTube Live before. I called it Summertime Tic-Tac-Toe. It's a free event. You're going to have to go to the dollar store. So I got this wooden shape. I painted it like a beach. I got some shells from the dollar store. I painted those two to make them, you know, more, more colorful. And I chose orange and pink. You could do any colors of shells. 
Um, doesn't have to be shells. It could be rocks from the beach, rocks from your garden, and just a fun little summertime tic-tac-toe game using acrylics. I use some paint pens. I used like a sponge to give it that wavy, frothy look. Um, yeah, so this is the example of a summertime tic-tac-toe that I'm going to share uh, the steps two weeks from now here on YouTube Live. I'll also show show some other examples for ideas. You don't have to do the, the beach idea. Here's another idea. Oop. Using rocks this time. And any shape, any wooden shape from the dollar store. So this one's a heart. And I found some rocks in my garden that sort of reminded me of watermelon. So this is like a watermelon patch tic-tac-toe with rocks from my garden. So again, I used acrylics. I used a, a sponge to do some dabbing. I used some paint pens. So that's a second example, just to get some ideas flowing. And then a third example, but again, I'm gonna teach the beach one. But here's just another example to get the creative juices flowing. Uh, ladybugs and bees. So I found rocks that were sort of oval, oblong, and then rocks that were a little bit more rounder, ladybug shape. And they're on, they're on flowers. Summertime tic-tac-toe, join me in two weeks time. If you wanna be reminded of the free events, such as this one, uh, to sign up for that free email reminder, go to our website. The website has all the paid events and all the free events that you can sign up for the free events with the free ticket and get an email reminder. So I'm sure a number of you got the email earlier today to remind you to come to this event because I sent that out myself. How are we doing here? Pretty dry, getting drier. Aren't they, Susan? Go to your dollar store, find a wooden shape, browse around the other little accessories they have, see what ideas you come up with. It doesn't have to be beach. It doesn't have to be springy or summery themed. Anything. You could do a, a wintertime one, a Christmas one in the future. It would be adorable. This is pretty dry. I want it to be fairly dry so that Maybe my colors don't run into my um, ocean color, but I could put a little color on my bubbles. If you look super close at these bubbles, it's hard to see with the bright lights. There's a little blue on the bubble and a little yellow on the bubble to make the bubble seem a little bit more 3D. Just like the tiniest bit. So get a little, little brush, whatever brush you have that has kind of a pointy tip or a small brush. Light blue, get a little light blue, get some blue with a lot of water. And we'll sort of shade our bubble to make it look a little bit more 3D. It also depends on the size of your bubble. If you are if you have a teeny tiny bubble that you're not too comfortable getting your brush in there, just skip it, you don't have to do that bit. So on each bubble on the sort of right and bottom, I put a little bit of light blue. So the right side and the bottom, like a little curve of light blue, leaving most of the bubble white. It doesn't have to be even on every single bubble. Just a little curve, like a little apostrophe of light, light blue. As long as it's on the same side for every bubble. Then it'll just make sense. Mine are different shapes and sizes. Some don't even go all the way to the edge. So yeah, it's it's subtle. Just a little, a little apostrophe of light blue. I'm gonna also do the baby bubbles, but just like a little, just a little boop. One little touch, touch, barely see it. T 
tiny. Even if I hold it up, I don't know if you would be able. Oh yeah, you see a little bit of that light blue. There we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the same thing, but with yellow and sort of like the top, top and left of the bubble. So the blue's down here, the yellow's up here. I'm going to try to not let them touch. Don't let your blue and yellow touch. Just like a little, little, little tiny swipe of yellow. Again, you could skip this if maybe your bubble's too small. You could do a different color. It doesn't have to be yellow. What about pink? Are you brave enough to do your tiny bubble as well? Just the tiniest little dot even, the tiniest little dash of yellow. Just don't let them touch. Oh, that one touched, it became a green bubble. I'm not mad, there's lots of green in the ocean. But I can also soak it up, soak it up with my brush. Dry it up, try again. Barely noticeable. And I'm going to fill in my background. It's going to be just blue, different shades of blue personally. Could have a little green in it. Um, your ocean could be sunset colors if you want. Your ocean could be black. Maybe it's nighttime. Let's see. I've got kind of a, yeah, a little bit of a greeny up here, greeny bluey. Lighter blue, darker blue, or just just all blue. Just a solid shade of blue would totally work. You could totally do that. Let's pop that guy over here. Do I want to go down or do I want to go up? I think I'll go from the top down. It could start with, you could go yellow yellow at the top, into green, into blues, into blacks, into whatever, purples, yeah. Let me get some green I'll mix green and blue together. Could be like limey, could be emeraldy. See what I got. That's pretty, yeah, that's a nice greeny blue. It's okay that it's like kind of see through. You see a lot of the canvas texture showing through. That's fine. There's definitely going to be darker parts, lighter parts. All of my fish are dry, so I'm pretty good to paint right up against the fish and not worry about like a bleed. I've got a lot of pink going on over here. Get out of here, you pink. Too much pink. Got a lot of water mixed in here. It's incredibly see-through.
I'm kind of working kind of like all over and kind of bringing it all down at the same time. But if that freaks you out, you can't work in that big of a scale all at once. Just do little patches, little areas at a time. Take your time. It's okay if there's, you know, hard edges that dry. And it's not like seamless. That's not what we're going for here. I've got bits that are um, bluer or greener than others. But just keep it kind of light near the top. At the top of the ocean of the sea, there's you know more light streaming through the water. So just keep it very watery and see-through. And then as I go down further and further, I'll get like darker. Oh, my family's home. My family went to a pool party without me. Hmm. <laughs> Was it a good pool party? Uh, yeah, they're watching a movie. Oh, they're watching a movie now. All right, as I go further and further down, I'm just going to mix in like more blue, more green. You can have purple in there. Just a little bit more intense. Again, it doesn't have to be like a seamless transition. You're going to get cauliflowers, you're gonna get blooms, shapes as it dries. Most of my grid, that original grid, is erased, but some of them you see little bits of hints of lines here and there. I'm not worried. Yeah, it looked, it looked pretty good even without the background, but with the background, it really finishes off. blue get even more more intense blue as we go down i might even get into some black or purple what would i what would i like best i think purple would be an interesting experiment i think i want to try it there's no purple in the ocean there is in mine. Okay, let's get some 
blue, get a little bit more blue here. Okay, some blue. Let me do some purple because I want to. Purple mixed with a little blue. A little blue in that purple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that really conveys a sense of depth deepest, darkest part of my ocean. We're almost there. If you've managed to keep up with me this whole time, good job. Yeah, control of the brush and, and speedily filling in areas just comes with practice. Just comes with practice. The more you do it. Mm, I love the I love the yellows of this piece popping against the blues, the purples. Go. So I've got my whole ocean filled in. I like that. So yeah, you can see that it doesn't perfectly transition as I go down. Um, if you wanted to kind of sort of make it blend a little better, you get your brush wet, just get water. And you can just kind of swirl the brush in the paints and kind of force them to get along or swirl around extra water to encourage some uneven patches, some cauliflowers and blooms to form by themselves. Sometimes I like that look, so I'll just dab extra water, dribble it around, see what happens as it dries. Even some of these dark bits, a little extra water Dab it around. See 
see what happens. Ooh, even in the light bits, these lighter bits up here, extra water. See what happens. It might look like, like ocean currents or something. There, yeah, like that. Uh, Jared asked how many weeks. I'm at 37 weeks. Three to go. It's very exciting. All right, this is looking cute. It's colorful, it pops, but what I think adds a little extra pizzazz is little white highlights here and there. Maybe on the eye, I just did one dot on the eyes to give it like a little twinkle in his eye. And then like a little, a little flick, one little single brush stroke kind of like on his face, maybe like a, a glossy highlight. I mean, are fish glossy? They're wet all the time. I guess they're glossy. And then I did also add some little bubble shapes sort of randomly here and there and some dots. So some circles and dots, there's dots here and there or any other kind of pattern you wanna add with white or with uh, you know, some acrylic paint, you could get some other colors of acrylics and add extra details, extra stripes, extra dots, extra patterns. Um, maybe more texture down here in the sand, literally anything you wanna do. Get my paint pen going. I have to kind of like activate the pen, right? My fish are all dry, so I should be fine with just a little, maybe on the top fin like that, like a little flick, maybe on the tail. You can do whatever you want. A little on the tail, fin. I'll also do a dot in the eyes. It really stands out on the darkest fishes, right? Not so much on like the yellow. I'm gonna do, oh yeah, dot in the eye. And if any of your uh, black lines have gotten a little bit covered up with paint, you could redo them with your Sharpie. Um, my C is still very wet. I probably won't show you um, all these bubble shapes and these dots, but when it's dry, when this is fully dry, I just added some circles. They could be open circles, might have a bit of a gap or a closed circle and dots, dot, 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 dot. I'm going to use my paint pen later. You could use an acrylic. You could use um, the butt of your brush. I'll dip the, the reverse end of the brush, the butt of the brush into the white and then dot, dot, dot some white for bubbles. Um, what else could we add? I guess we could add our signature. Haven't done that yet. I'm gonna put mine maybe on this rock down here. I just put my initials. If you want to put your whole autograph, you could put the date, the year, maybe put the title somewhere, maybe on the back or on the side. Schools out for summer. Exclamation. How cute are you? So yeah, two different, um, but both equally cute. I do like the addition of the, the ocean floor. I think that kind of makes it a scene more so than this one without the floor, but super cute. What about, whoops, what about, what else could you add? 
a shipwreck, a submersible, anything at all. Yeah, that's looking nice. Getting almost dry. Almost dry. I could do probably some dots in some of the driest bits. Dot, dot. Trying to avoid the wet bits. And some circles. Lots of bubbles in the ocean. Big ones, little ones. Yeah, I'll probably do a lot more once this is fully dry. It's looking good. All right. That wraps it up. Um, if you have any questions, please go into the live chat. Otherwise, please join us in our Facebook group. Watercolor Lovers by Artist Palette Durham Region. I've lo I'd love to see photos of your fish from tonight or, or any of your other watercolor tutorials that you've done with us, your original watercolors even. Any questions for me at all before I let you go? If there's still some kids who stuck it out the whole two hours, good job. I hope you guys have a good, good summer. And um, good luck in the in the next school year. I hope everyone had a very nice report card. All right, I don't see any questions coming through. And you can um, email us any questions, direct message us on Facebook. All right, I think that wraps us up. Thank you so much for joining me this evening, guys. Have a lovely summer. Thank you, Jared. Susan's going to Newfoundland. That's awesome. I'm going to go to Nova Scotia in August after the baby's born. All right. Good night, friends. Happy painting. Bye now. <laughs>